forget about that uh, from time to time. Uh, I thank God for all that He's already done, but I thank God for what all He's going to continue to do. I like that volume right there. You just keep it there be fine. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but uh, I do appreciate... Uh, I was kidding right there. Amen. You turned it down just a little bit. <laughs> Look, he is back there smiling just like a possum right there. I don't know what it is, but I'll tell you what, he is a handful, amen. Hey, baby girl, I appreciate uh, Brother Bobby. I do. I, the faithfulness of that young man and his wife, I, I believe we ought to, to pin flowers from time to time on why we got them here. But all of our deacons, church, I'm going to tell you, you've got one of the most faithful, I don't want to call them a deacon board, but a group of deacons that a church could ever ask for. And every one of them, you can see wisdom. You can see the love of God. You pray for them. They've been a, a, a source of support through each one of you to myself and to my family that you cannot imagine. It's easy to get discouraged, isn't it? Amen. The day and hour we live in, it's easy to get discouraged. I want to ask you do you ever feel defeated? Do you ever feel like you just want to quit? Man, it, it's, it's hard not to feel like that. I'm going to tell you, uh, when you start looking around and you see the blessings of God, and through prayer requests, we heard Mama request prayer for Miss Allie. Uh, we heard prayer requests for Miss Margaret. We've heard prayer requests for others. You've heard prayer requests for Mr. Johnny back there over the last several weeks, Gerald, others. On and on and on. All of you, we've heard prayer requests. I'm going to tell you what, God has answered prayers. Miss Sharon, it's so, so many ways. I'm going to stand and say that I love him, Brother Brandon, for his goodness, for his faithfulness, for the way he answers our prayers. And God, sometimes he does it in different ways than what we expect, but he always answers our prayers. And Miss Allie is sitting back there. I know she's hurt. But honey, ever since I've got the text for you, Mama, I've been giving God praise for His protective hand on you because how much worse it could have been. Miss Margaret, I know she's facing back pain and trouble, but God's been faithful through it all. She's been battling uh, through it all. and She's got upcoming surgery. There Johnny is back there. They thought he was going to have to do open heart surgery. And they said, now we're not going to have to do that. And God's answering prayers, amen. And God is faithful, amen. And God deserves for us to be faithful. Uh, John chapter number 19, three verses. We don't get started. I'll tell you what, you can build a big front porch. If you never get in the house, you're never going to finish, right? <laughs> but uh, I tell you, it's just I enjoy being in the house of God. I feel so little standing up here behind the pulpit. I feel so small for the task at hand. It leads me to understand that, Brother Randall, I can do nothing without him. But I understand his promise, Miss Kennedy, that we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. We thankful this morning we're found in the house of God, found around his faithful, and appreciate you being here. We've been looking over the last few weeks. We've been looking at the tabernacle and the picture of our Lord Jesus Christ, not only the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, but also of the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even last week we looked at uh, the rent veil, how it was rent from the top to the bottom, and through the suffering and through the flesh of Jesus Christ being torn in the persecution and suffering of the cross at Calvary, a way was made that we would not have to go to a priest, brother, thank the Lord for that, amen, that we don't have to go to no man. Because there's some times, brother, uh, and some of the times that you need God the, the most in your life is going to be the times when all you've got time to do is fall down on your knees and call out to the Father. Brother Nick, it's good to know, brother, you've been there, we've all been there. To all the strength and all, and he didn't even have the words to pray. All you can do is fall down on your knees and say, Father, this is your child and I need you. Boy, ain't he faithful, amen. He knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. 
The Bible says he even hears and understands the groanings of your spirit. There's not a tear that you've dropped that he's not recorded. He understands and knows it even to the point, Brother Bobby, where a hair fall from your head. Amen? Ain't it good to know? God's so faithful, isn't he? Amen? But here we find ourselves in the picture on a hill called Calvary. A place called Golgotha. Uh, that, uh, a place of the skull. It's a place where Jesus Christ was led out by the Roman soldiers where uh, all the, uh, the religious leaders yelled in a mob form, in a mob fashion, crucify Him, away with Him. Even to the point where they said, Say not that he is our king, but that he said he was our king. And Pilate said, I, what I have written, I have written. And there around the cross at the time of the crucifixion, we find darkness covered the earth from the time of noon to three o'clock. The, 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 the temple, uh, the veil of the temple was rent. Earthquakes, uh, rocks were rent. There, the Bible says, Jesus cried out on the cross, it is finished. If you'll study, and I'm sure some of you Bible scholars are, there were seven phrases or sayings of Jesus that was uttered on the cross. I believe it's, it's healthy and I believe it's necessary for us to study and look at those. For I'm going to tell you, at a time of the anguishing pain and the, per, the suffering of the cross, you wouldn't think, honest, you wouldn't think that a man would even be in his right mind to be able to even speak some of the things that Jesus Christ spoke on the cross at Calvary. But we're going to look at one of those phrases and one of those sayings, and it's found in our text in St. John in chapter number 19, starting at verse number 28 through 30. If you will, we're going to look real quickly here, and uh, we want to see here what thus saith the Word of God. The Bible says... Verse number 28, chapter number 19 of St. John. After this, now he's been on the cross sometime. Uh, He's been hanging there. He's been watching them. Uh, There was one phrase that Jesus Christ uttered, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. A time spent with the repentant thief on the cross where he said, Today thou shalt be with me. In paradise, a time just before this passage of Scripture where he looked down and saw his mother and the disciple whom Jesus loved, which is uh, John, standing there at the foot of the cross. He said, Woman, behold thy son. He told John, Behold thy mother. At that moment in time, uh, John took uh, Mary into his home and took care of her. There, the Bible says after this, in verse number 28, Jesus, knowing that all (laughs) things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Another of saying. But verse number 29, the Bible says, Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. And when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. Heavenly Father, we love you. Now for just a few minutes, Lord, I pray, dear God, that we would separate ourselves from the world. God, I pray that you would use this vessel of clay as a mouthpiece of the Holy Spirit. But Lord, I also pray for those that are listening here in person today and those that will receive the Word of God by the way of internet and those that will receive it at a later time. I pray to Heavenly Father, we would, Lord... uh, mortify and crucify this flesh for just a little while that we would receive your precious word and look through the spiritual eyes that you have given us. Lord, I pray that we would do it in such a way that your spirit would have free course and liberty in the service that if there's one here today that is lost, that they would, uh, they would recognize their lost condition and receive Christ as their personal Savior. Maybe there's one, a Christian here today Lord, they're searching for that peace. They're searching for that contentment. And Lord, the world's not able to give it. And Lord, they realize today that the only place they've ever had peace and contentment was in fellowship with you. I pray, Lord, that they would see that all they have to do is confess their sins today. God, you'll restore to them the joy of their salvation. 
Do the work that only you can do. Hide us behind the cross as we do our best to decrease that Christ would increase for it's in His precious name we pray. Amen. And amen. For just a little while, I want to look at those three words that Jesus uttered on the cross at Calvary. Those three words, it is finished. It is finished. Um, you know, um, at the time that the King James Bible was uh, translated from uh, the Greek and, and from the Hebrew, uh, and we, we understand that the Greek was received from a document called the Texas Receptus. Some of y'all have heard of that. And, and uh, it's, it's commonly referred to, uh, referred to as the received text. And that's where uh, it was a, 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 a complete and a perfect translation into the King's English or into uh, the English language. Um, and as we uh, speak the English language, we have to look at those three words, it is finished, and find exactly what that means. We want to try to do that today, and the only way you're going to understand it is to take what the Word of God says and allow the Holy Spirit to interpret that in your heart. So don't look for me to do that. Listen to the still small voice that will do its perfect work in your life. Uh, but first of all, we got to understand, what was the purpose of Jesus coming to, the, uh, to this earth anyhow? It was that He would die for the sins of the whole world. We found that in our study of uh, the tabernacle. The purpose of the tabernacle was to bring uh, folk and bring mankind into the presence of God. The only way uh, that the high priest could enter in was because of a blood sacrifice. But because of that blood sacrifice not being perfect, it had to be done year after year. It was all a shadow of good things to come. The good things to come was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's Him today that I want to lift up to you as we look here in the phrase, It is finished. In our English language, let's look at that first word. It is finished. Ain't it, ain't it good to know this morning that He did not say, I I am finished. Amen. Uh, Jesus did not say that. Ain't it good to know this morning that Jesus uh, did not say you or are finished. Praise the Lord for that. He said it is finished. That it is talking about one particular thing. And what was that particular thing? That particular thing was salvation's plan that God had formulated before the foundations of the earth. He knew that man would sin and fall short of the glory of God. He knew that the wages of sin would be death. But he had a plan that the gift of God uh, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is eternal life. God set that plan in motion the moment the foundations of the earth were set in and formed. We find that that it is salvation's redemption plan. But on the English language, we look on and find that next word. It is finished. Amen. Ain't you glad to say this morning that He did not say it is almost finished. Finished. He did not say it may be finished, but Jesus Christ uttered, it is finished. Amen. That last word, finished. Praise the Lord. What does that last word, finished, mean? That means it means to be a complete. It means accomplished. It means what He set forth to do, He has completed, and it is finished. It's not something that will maybe con uh, completed or partially completed. He said salvation's redemptive plan has been completed there on the cross at Calvary. The Bible tells us over in Hebrews chapter number 10. We've been pulling a lot of text from there from the last few weeks. But the Bible says, talking about Jesus. But verse number 12, Hebrews chapter 10. The Bible says, but this man, talking about Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice forever for sins, forever sat down on the right hand of God. Offered one sacrifice for sin, forever, then was seated on the right hand of God, on the right hand of the Father. What is that? That is a picture of completion. 
That is a picture of power that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is seated on the right hand of the Father. But this morning I want to dive just a little bit deeper into the study of It Is Finished. We have to look back into the Greek interpretation or the Greek language that we get this phrase, it is finished from. And in my study, I relying a lot on concordances, relying on history. But I'm going to tell you, as we look at this, it lines up perfectly with the Word of God and we'll give verses to support that. Amen? Don't take it from me. Search the Word of God and see if a man of God or any Anybody stands and tells you something with the authority of the Word of God and He does not give you the verses and the Scripture to back it up, call Him on it. Amen? Ask Him, show me in Scripture where that says. Because, Brother Bobby, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that's trying to stand on something other than the Word of God. But I'm here to tell you of any other than the Word of God is sinking sand. If you're looking this morning to build your life, on something uh, that'll stand. Uh, there is no other foundation uh, that's been laid uh, than the one that is laid uh, through Jesus Christ uh, in the Word of God. If you're looking to build your family uh, on something that'll stand uh, when all hell uh, is against the family unit today, uh, I'm telling you, Daddy, uh, it's time you stand up. I uh, drop some of the things uh, that pleasures the flesh. Uh, what you want to do in this life, uh, what you think you want to do. Uh, you get down on your knees. Uh, uh, submit yourself uh, to the Word of God. Uh, stand uh, on the Word of God uh, and say it's for me uh, and my house. Uh, uh, we're going to stand on the Word. Amen. We're going to go on for God. If you're going to stand in the wicked day, you better have a foothold on something that will weather the storm. And I promise you this man's opinion, good news for modern man, uh, the, the, the un, uninspired versions that are out there today, you build your life on that. You know what the old Satan's doing? Satan is tempering you. He's testing you. He's preparing you for the, for the, uh, the uh, uh, Antichrist to step. That's what he's doing. That's what he's doing, y'all. Look, the tactics of the devil is the same from the foundation of the earth. From the time he tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden, he's the same slew-footed, subtle creature. And he's doing it. You can see it in the world. Stand back, quit looking in the, in, through a tunnel and stand back and look at the big picture and see what this world has done and, and how, how the Satan has worked over the last 20 years, not just the last two years. The last 20 years has groomed mankind into following mankind. Is that not right, brother? That's what they're doing. They're following man. They're following... Listen, I'm not saying ignore your doctor. But the doctors are not always right either, amen? Amen, you follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit in your life. Oh, we must move on if we're going to make it by 1230, Brother Bobby. But the Greek translation, it is finished. It's translated from one word. One word in the Greek language is where we get it is finished from. And you get home and study this. That word is tetalistai. Tetalistai is that one word in the Greek language. That there was no one word in the English language that could bring about the same meaning as that word tetalistai. So that begs us to try to find the definition or better yet, how was that word tetalistai used in the Greek language in the time period of our Lord Jesus Christ? The Bible says he was hanging on the cross. And whenever he received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. To Talistai. One of the ways that the Greeks used the word to Talistai was in a time of war. Greeks and the Roman culture during that time was all about war. We read of a time whenever David was in the castle. You remember what time, what time it was? It was a time that kings were to be at war. 
The book of Ecclesiastes there in chapter number 3 says there's a time for everything under the sun. There's a time for peace and there's a time for war. And in the Greek culture in the time of war, you can see the soldiers and all of them go out to battle. And as those soldiers go out to battle and they fought in that battle, if that war that they fought in was won overwhelmingly, they was victorious in their fight and in their battle. The king or the ruler would send a herald or a runner back into the city, back into where the soldiers had come from, back into where the families had come from. And you know what that, that runner would do? He would run right back into the center of that city. He would cock his head back and cup his hands and he would yell out one word. He would say, Tetelestai! Tetelestai! The victory is won! The battle is over! The victory is secure. Not just partially, but overwhelmingly. The victory is won. I tell you this morning, as Jesus hung on the cross at Calvary, and He said, it is finished. Uh, today, church, I want you to see. Uh, he said, the victory is won. Uh, the battle is over. Uh, if you're discouraged uh, and you're ready to give up, uh, understand this. Uh, it's hard to kill a man uh, that is prepared and ready to die I keep your eyes on Jesus and know that the battle is won and the victory is secure amen thank God it is finished I look back even to the Genesis chapter number 3 do you remember whenever God was confronting Adam and Eve and confronting Satan in the first prophecy it is finished all the prophecy of the Old Testament was fulfilled at the cross at Calvary. Completed. Finished. To Talestai. Accomplished. The cross at Calvary. But God said this to the serpent, the devil, in Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 15, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Well, it is good to know this morning when Jesus Christ said it is finished on the cross at Calvary, the devil and all hell is not will be, but he is already defeated in your life. Thank God for that. I hope that means something to you because I get discouraged. You're discouraged. I want to tell you we got our eyes on the fact that the victory is won. We've seen the prophecy there. And I love that movie, and I know you just you got to take the movies, you take literature other than the Word of God, you got to take it and compare uh, Scripture with whatever you're looking at and, and always stand on the Scripture. But I love, uh, Brother Seth, that movie, The Passion of the Christ. you remember that uh, whenever it come out? Uh, and I don't know if anybody ever thought about that. As soon as that come out, I told Belinda, I said, if they thought the movie was good, they ought to read the book. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I, that, that picture of Jesus in the garden. Whenever he was, he was sweat became as great drops of blood and he was there bowed. Just, you know, Satan is doing, all hell come against him. Do you remember Satan there in that day? He was pictured as that, uh, had a black drape and he was real pale and white. And uh, do you remember right there at the end, uh, whenever Jesus was, got done praying, and uh, do you remember what come out of the bottom of his uh, skirt? Was, it was a snake. Do you remember that? And Jesus Christ rose up. This is the, he portrayed Christ there in that movie. Do you remember what he done? Uh, he ended that scene by taking his heel and stomping the head and squishing that snake. I said, yes! <laughs> Every time I say that, yeah! <laughs> I love that. Because that was the defeat of Satan prophesied in Genesis chapter number 3 that God would rise His Son up one day you may bruise his heel. He may have to suffer on the cross for just a little while. But Satan, let it be known that you will be destroyed. You will be defeated. What a miraculous way. Tetalistai, the victory is won. Not only that, that word tetalistai in the Greek language and the custom was used oftentimes in court cases. 
they would be someone that would be brought before the court and all the evidence would laid out. But overwhelmingly, they were proven innocent. All the charges. And before the judge, he would, he would say, you've been proven without guilt and you're free to go. He would say it in such a way of one word. A legal term. The judge would say, to Talestai. It's completed. You're free to go. You're not condemned. All the charges, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I, if you look back at the sin that you've committed even in your young life, do you know that's a long list of charges? And the Bible calls old Satan the accuser of the brethren. There's not a day that goes by that old Satan don't go before God and accuse the brother, accuse the children. I believe that. You're supposed to be saved. Look at her. You hear, see what she done? Did you see, did you hear what she said? Did you see what that teenager done? Did you, did you see what, what he's going to do right there? Do you know what the Bible tells us over in Romans chapter number 3? Do you remember what 3.23 says? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But don't stop there. Read Romans 3.24 where the Bible says, Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Hey, listen this morning. And whenever the judge, God the Father, looks on you this morning, ain't it good to know that He does not see all the sin and all the filth and all the perversion that we have committed, all the mistakes, all the times we were disobedient. But the Bible says, being justified. What does justified mean? Justified, never sin. Just before God. Listen, He don't see all the sin because one day God come your way, called you out from the world, saved your soul through the righteousness I put on the robe of Jesus Christ and now before God you're seen white washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. Amen. Ain't it good to know you're no longer guilty in God's eyes? I'm not saying that you wasn't guilty. But I'm saying because Jesus Christ said it is finished. He took your place. He took my place. He paid my sentence. He paid the debt that I owed. God be the glory for that. To tell us, die. you're free to go. No longer condemned. It's been proven. Been proven through the blood of my darling son that you're set free. Not only that, oh, we got to look a little farther. You know what? They, there was another time once a year on the Day of Atonement, Brother Rex, that they would call all the lambs. They had lambs that were taken care of. They were kept out of harm's way because on the Day of Atonement, God required the best that man had to offer. He said, I want you to pick out a lamb without spot, without blemish. And on that Day of Atonement, the high priest would look over all the lambs that was brought before him. You know what? No doubt he found one that had a, a briar mark. Maybe another one that had a little gimp, a little limp. Another one maybe had something wrong with its eye. Nothing really that, that was the fault of that lamb, but that lamb just was not perfect. But it says whenever the high priest finally found that one lamb that was sufficient to offer up as a blood sacrifice. All you got to remember, the high priest had to make sure this was the best. And this was the one. Because if it was not, and he went into the holiest of holies with blood that was not sufficient for the atonement, he would have been struck dead. The high priest, whenever he finally found that little lamb, that he said, this is the best that we've got. Even though that lamb wasn't perfect, they say that he would pick that lamb up 
And he would hold it up in the middle of the congregation. And when he'd say one word, he would say, Tetalista. It's finished. We finally found the one. This one will do to be sufficient for what God has for us today. There on the cross at Calvary, Jesus Christ uttered these words, It is finished. And our mind goes back to John chapter number 1. Verse number 29, whenever John the Baptist, God, could you imagine John the Baptist, buddy? Laboring in the Word. Born six months before Lord Jesus Christ went out to prepare the way. John the Baptist been sought, ridiculed, mocked, made fun of. John the Baptist walked in the back door this morning. Wouldn't none of y'all slide over and let him sit with you? He stinks. He's got a coat of Campbell's hair on. Does he not know what temperature he is? Long hair, no doubt. He's made his, his food was locusts and wild honey. Amen. And he looked at you and smiled, had legs come out of his t- No. What I'm saying is that he wasn't much this world would accept, but he went about preaching repentance. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. But there in John chapter number 1, verse number 29, do you remember what John the Baptist done? He was baptizing by the river. He looked up and saw Jesus coming afar off. He said these words, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Down on the cross at Calvary. Understand the Word of God this morning. Don't you live defeated lives. A child of God, don't get your eyes on this world. Don't you look at the tricks of the devil and you get discouraged. And I'm telling you, the battle's won. The battle is won. The victory has been secured. We see also, and now you can stand before God just if you had never see it because you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. But there's one that come obedient to the Father. He is the perfect Lamb of God. The one prophesied of the suffering servant in Isaiah chapter number 53. Who is bruised for our iniquities. But I thank God by His stripes we are healed. This morning we looked at three different ways you could say it is finished in your life. For Jesus won the victory on the cross at Calvary. The battle's won. The devil's been defeated. Could you imagine what it must have been like for the devil whenever Jesus Christ descended into the heart of the earth in a place known as Sheol, which is called Abraham's bosom? And the Bible says he led captivity captive. Do you know what that means? They was, they was believers from the Old Testament. That's why the story of rich man and Lazarus makes much sense if you'll see that. There was a, a place called Sheol, Abraham's bosom. Those that died in the faith went and resided into that place until the completion of salvation's plan on the cross at Calvary. Those words, it is finished had great, great results that we don't even realize. But whenever Jesus said it is finished, He also meant that they're waiting time. Now it was a place called paradise, amen? No doubt it was a good place. I'm going to tell you what, it's nothing like a place that we read about that we call home. A place called heaven. Would you imagine what it must have been like for the old devil whenever Jesus Christ Descended into the heart of the earth and preached victory. Victory in Jesus. I believe whenever he stepped out down in paradise, son of hell, he said well, equivalently to the word, Tetalistai. <laughs> the victory's been won. 
that you read about, that that you hoped for. It's been completed. It's been accomplished. Now no longer you have to stay here. You can ascend to the Father with me. And thank God today we are victorious because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He has completed it. Now we don't have to go to a place of layaway. Amen. A place of waiting. Thank God at the moment our last breath is took here. We're forever with our Father in heaven. No more sin, no more heartache. Think about the words of Jesus. As I was studying this message, I, there, there's other words that Jesus had mentioned that come to my mind as I studied. I, I believe there's three more words, powerful words that were spoken by an angel just three days later. Whenever the women come to the tomb that day to anoint Jesus with spices, there the great stone was rolled away. And they looked at the women and said, Why seek you to live among the dead? He is risen, just like he said. Three, he is risen. Does that mean anything to you? This because he lives. He was the first fruits of the resurrection because He lives. We shall never die. Thank the Lord for that. This sure this body, this body's going to return back to the dust. Amen. I, I'm ready for a glorified body. I don't know about y'all. Amen. This one runs off of hamburgers and hot dogs. We've already seen that. Amen. Thank God that we'll have a tree that bears twelve manner fruits, and a place where eyes not seen, nor ear heard, and it's never entered in the heart of the man's all the things that he has prepared for those that love him. I want to leave you with this one thought. It's actually four words. Some of my favorite scriptures, John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, four words, I will come again. That when there you may be also. When Jesus Christ said it is finished, not only the angel said it, He is risen, I believe there in the early part of the, chapter, the chapters of Acts, whenever his boys were standing there, watching him ascend up to the Father, I believe those words in John 14 run true. He says, he says, Behold, the Bible tells us, I go and prepare a place for you, and I will come again. Understand that. That's a promise from the Lord. Because of His victory, He will come again and receive us unto Himself. That where He is, there we may be also. Most of all, to be able to see our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See the crown marks that was thrust on His head, nail prints in His hands and His feet. And as a soldier pierced the side of our Lord Jesus Christ, and see that scar as well. But thank God that as that song is sung, the only scars that's in heaven is the ones that's holding you. Thank God we'll have a body, no more sickness, no more pain, no more suffering. We've got people here today that suffered the loss of a loved one, and you're fighting that, and you're dealing with that. As much love as you have for that person that you separated with, you'll continue to deal with that till the Lord calls you home or He returns. But I'm telling you, if that loved one was saved by the grace of God and they died in Christ, I will tell you they're enjoying the victory. They're enjoying and they know what Jesus meant. They know what He meant when He said it is finished. It is completed. It is accomplished. Your battle down here is over. Your sickness, 
No longer you got to fight for that next breath of that hospital bed. No longer you got to have to have somebody else to help you walk. For you're perfectly healed and you're in the arms of Jesus. Thank God there's a day coming. The Bible says that we'll be called up together in the air with those that's went on before us. And the Bible says so shall we ever be with the Lord. So when you get discouraged, when you feel like quitting, understand it's not your battle to fight. For the battle has already been won. Your job is to live in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's hard to kill a man or a woman that is ready and prepared to die. How can you kill a man whenever looked to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord, to live as Christ, to die as gain? Live for Jesus. He's already fought the battle. He's already said, you're no longer guilty. He's already said, He is the Lamb. There's one slain from the foundation of the earth. The Bible says, whenever Jesus Christ said it is finished, He offered up that sacrifice. You remember our, our verse that we shared with you, Hebrews chapter 10. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice, talking about his body and his blood, for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Old Stephen saw him standing. You remember when they were stoning Stephen? He said he saw the heavens open and saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. I wonder this morning, this is just Keith right here, I wonder this morning how close, how close God is to telling Jesus, go bring your bride on. Go, I, I, I'm, I'm done. I'm done watching them suffer. I've given mankind opportunity after opportunity. They've heard the salvation's plan. They know that Jesus Christ paid it, but they continue to reject it. And God says, go and bring my children home, that my house will be full. I wonder this morning if God's not told him to go ahead and stand and get ready for that day is soon coming. I will come and be, come again. I've said before, and the Lord gave us a message on this. Ready or not, here He comes. Ready or not, Jesus is coming back. Right now is the accepted time to make your preparation. Would you do that before it's too late as you stand to your feet? <clears throat> Brother Bobby... One, one gets a song of invitation, please. I'll tell you what, if they will, just play softly. Uh, just as I am, if y'all will do that. Our, our musicians, we don't have to sing. Just as I am, if y'all will play softly right there. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed this morning. God's wanting to do a work in your life. Listen, child of God, you put it off. 